In this tutorial, we will explore the document view framework in WX Widgets. We will see how WX Widgets simplifies tasks like saving documents, opening existing ones, and preventing closing the app by accident, without the need for us to create dialogues or manually track the document's state. Additionally, the document view framework enhances code quality by separating the responsibilities of the user interface and the document's data. This promotes cleaner and more maintainable code, where the views handle presentation and user interaction, while documents focus on data. The central element of this architecture is WX Doc Manager. It handles the events and manages the creation and destruction of documents and views. To create a document, it uses WX Doc template, which connects the WX document with WX view for a given file type. In our app, we need to subclass the WX document class, where we manage the document's data, and implement saving and loading it from streams. We update the document and the UI in the WX view subclass, which acts as a proxy between the two. Let's dive in and learn how to implement it in practice. Here's our drawing canvas, the control on the right side of the window displaying the user's drawing. In the previous version of the app from the XML tutorial, this component did everything. It contained the current settings for pen, width and color, stored the document contents, which is the array of squiggles drawn by the user, and updated the document directly in the mouse events. And this is the version updated for the document view framework. Note that we don't store the document's data. There is no array of squiggles, just a pointer to the drawing view, which manages the interactions between the UI and the model. In the Canvas implementation, we focus on the technical details of the UI, binding to events, creating the context menu, and showing the export dialog. You might ask why we need the file dialog if the document view framework handles saving and opening files, but exporting is something different. This operation renders our image as pixels, losing all information about lines, their widths, colors, and intermediate points. We also handle the mouse events, taking care of the details like refreshing the control and checking if the user is dragging while holding the mouse button or just moving the cursor. The drawing view only gets the information that is interesting for the business logic through the mouse down and mouse drag callbacks. Note that we also forward the drawing operation to the view. It has access to the document and knows how to draw it. Let's move on to our WX view. Here we connect the UI with the document. We have access to our WX document subclass, which we can modify and display. The drawing document is even simpler. We have the serialization methods and our array of squiggles there. The save object and the load object will be called by the framework automatically when there is a need to save or load a document. For example, when the save command is chosen from the menu. This is great, but how this all works together? Who creates what and when? You might have noticed that the drawing canvas needs a pointer to the drawing view. The view itself has access to the document. To see how the framework sets up these relationships, we need to head to the main file. The first thing we see is that my frame derives from the WX doc parent frame. This class has a special constructor that accepts the WX doc manager object. As I mentioned in the introduction, the document manager is the orchestrator of the whole document view framework. We instantiate it in the application initialization method. Here, we also create a WX doc template that binds the drawing document with the drawing view for the selected file type. Note the class info macros. That's WX Widget's way of resolving types at runtime. Both our drawing view and drawing document classes are declared as WX dynamic classes. This lets the document template create the correct subclasses of WX document and WX view as needed. And when does that happen? That's WX Doc Manager's job. When the user selects the new file menu item, the Doc Manager handles that event and asks the Doc template to create the correct WX view and WX document objects and link them together. In the case of saving, the Document Manager prepares the streams and calls the implementation of WX document to do the serialization. To enable all of this, we simply need to build the main menu using standard WX Widgets menu identifiers. The document view framework takes care of the rest. This includes asking the user if they want to save their modified file. To set the modification status, we need to call get document modify every time the user changes the document, and that's it. When we call modify, the title bar changes to include the edited text. 
we set up this behavior in the onChange file name callback. This one is executed when the file name changes, after opening a new file for example, but also after document modification, which makes this name a bit unfortunate. Alright, we understand how the doc manager handles various events and how the doc template creates correct WX view and WX document objects. But what about our drawing canvas? As we can see in the constructor declaration, this object requires a drawing view. But drawing view is constructed by WX doc template, which knows nothing about our canvas. Here's how we solve this problem. In the onCreate method, we signal to the app that the UI change of the main frame is needed. Similarly, in onClose, we call the same method with a null parameter, which means that there are no open documents. The main frame removes the current drawing canvas control by clearing the sizer for the right side of the splitter. Then it creates a new canvas connected to the provided drawing view or resets the window's title if there is no file open. Note that we only support a single window for the whole application and that's why we call setup canvas for view on that frame instance. If we were to allow multiple windows with different documents, we could use WX view set frame and get frame pair to get to the correct WX frame object. What about the currently selected pen width and color? These are also managed by the main frame. In the previous version of the app, the frame copied these values to the canvas object. In this version, we use the app where these settings are stored in a tool settings object. They are then retrieved by the drawing view to set the current squiggles properties. And that's it for this tutorial. We will continue developing this application on this channel, so make sure you are subscribed, and I will see you in the next one.